Greetings Cyberdogs, this is Rendog coming at you from this Let's Play Minecraft Survival Series and in the previous episode we were dying like a noob as well as building the railway to the NPC village. Uh, but more than anything we were just dying like a noob. Um, I got owned by an Enderman um, because I looked at his ass and well to be fair he was trying to fiddle with my sheep and uh, you know I, I, wasn't, I was having none of it. Um, but I looked at him and he murderized me and I lost 30 levels before I could enchant my third pickaxe. <sighs> and if you haven't seen that episode, don't go watch it. <laughs> oh man. But anyway, we are back on track, guys. We are building the railway line. And this railway line is going all the way to the NPC village. You can see I've already dug the tunnel out um, to all the way through this this. Uh, jungle and all, all the way through these biomes. Now let me tell you, this uh, journey to the NPC village is going to be beautiful. We go through some amazing scenery and what I'm going to try and do is when we get to these kind of parts that go over these little lakes, I'm going to try and, and make like um, make the railway have sort of, not a balcony, but sort of glass windows or something. So it's kind of like you're traveling along and you can, you can have a look um, at where you're at, if you know what I'm saying. It is going to be sweet. So guys, at the end of the last episode, I had a story that I wanted to tell you. And um, I, while I've been building the mob trap, hang on, let me just get a sip of coffee. Mm. Caffeine straight to the ass. Um, so anyway, let me. I, w I wanted to tell you a story because building the, the, the mob spawner and all of the, that red wiring and all that stuff reminded me of something from my youth that I wanted to share with you guys. And man, I must have been about... Oh, I don't know, 10, I reckon. Yeah, I was 10 years old, and, and I was in maths class. And what ha happened at my school is that you had to earn the right to use a pen instead of a pencil. So to, to use an ink, ink pen, um, you, you had to earn the right. And it was called a pen license, in fact. And I was the last person in my class to get my pen license. Um, and I've always blamed that on the fact that I'm left-handed. And, um, and, you know, my mom always told me, don't worry, my darling. Left-handed people have really bad handwriting. And I was like, oh, thanks, Mom. That's that's very true. That's me, man. I'm left-handed. I've got really bad handwriting. Um, oh, my mom always knew how to make me feel better. Uh, anyway, so I felt really, really bad for some reason. No one actually cared now that I think about it. So here you can see is the next piece of the traveling. Look how beautiful it is, man. It's sweet. Um, no one actually cared that I was the last person, but I cared. So... During maths class, the first maths class after I got my pen license, I was trying to figure out what I could do to, to try and be cool again. And I suddenly had an epiphany. And I realized that what I needed to do was make a gang. And the reason that I thought about that is because I'd been reading a series called um, The Secret Seven. And basically that was a, a book, like a series of books about a gang of kids um, who were best friends and all that sort of jazz. And I was like, man, you know what? That is actually the sweetest idea. So what I did was I wrote on a piece of paper um, during maths class. I wasn't even concentrating. And I wrote, who wants to join th the Silkworm Gang? <laughs> when I think about it now, man, that is the lamest name for a gang ever. But at the time, we were in Silkworm season. Now, I, d I don't know um, if you guys also have Silkworms in your countries. Um, so now you can see the, the railway jumps into uh, uh, a winter biome. <coughs> and um, we're almost, we're getting very close actually to the desert now. Um, anyway, I don't know if you guys have silkworms, but what silkworms are are worms that, well, as their name implies, produce silk and then they make a cocoon and then they, they uh, bite out of the cocoon and um, they become moths. And depending on what you feed the, the w them at the worm stage is the color of their silk. So if you feed them beetroot, for example, their silk is um, red. And um, silkworms were like a massive, 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 massive thing at my school. Every single year, the silkworm season was just like the most insane season ever. We built like customized, here you can see the desert now um, is approaching. We built like customized, get out of the way, you butt bandit. Um, customized silkworm holders and all that sort of stuff and some you know some guys had amazing houses for their silkworms some guys just used shoe boxes um, but man silkworms were big business and some of us had mulberry trees in our in our gardens and mulberry trees were really really good food for silkworms oh god damn it so we've run out of wood but you can see we are 
the, the line goes like this into the desert and then turns right and then the NPC village is, is just about there. Um, so anyway, let's go back and get some more wood. Anyway, so I thought to myself, well, it's silkworm season and, um, you know, everybody loves silkworm. So I'm going to make the silkworm gang. So I wrote on a piece of paper, who wants to join the silkworm gang? And then I, I had like a list of... Um, of benefits right so joining the silkworm gang gets you and i i can't remember what the benefits were but they, they would have been something like um your uh, a fort that only you can go into a membership badge um silkworm uh, dollars because i would i would print um money with the picture of a silkworm on it for for anyone that was in the gang they could use that money to sell stuff to each other um, what were the other benefits? Oh, protection from other gangs, even though there weren't any other gangs. Um, little did I know that it would actually um, spawn, this little project of mine would actually spawn many, many gangs in the school. But anyway, I left a piece of paper on my desk, and as I stood up to go to lunch, I sort of shouted, it shouted to everybody in the class, anyone who wants to join the Silkworm gang, come to my desk and put your name down. And then I just ran out because I didn't, I didn't think anyone would join. You know, I didn't, didn't want to be there like a butthole while, while everyone laughed at me and just left. And I went to lunch and I came back and there were about 10 or 12 names on, um, let's take this tree down. Um, there were about 10, 10 or 12 names on the, the, on the piece of paper. And I couldn't believe that um, there were so many names on the piece of paper, man. I was the happiest guy ever. And so just before the teacher came in for the next class, I stood up as the, the leader of the new Silkworm Gang and I said, Silkworm Gang members, we have a meeting tonight um, after school just behind um, the, the rubbish bins. So basically there were these huge recycling bins just outside the, um, the school. And I used to go there because um, I used to think that no teachers would go there. Um, that it was like a secret place and and at first i thought this would be a really good um, spot for our gang so anyway i sh i shouted that and um then during the next class i wrote i just wrote on pieces of paper um silkworm gang member number one and silkworm gang member number two and then um at the end of the class i i gave out the these paper badges basically to everyone who put their name on the on the silkworm gang list <laughs> and then um, not all of us could go to the first meeting because um, some of the guys had to go to play sport and their parents had come to pick them up and everything but about five guys came to the the first meeting of the silkworm gang and uh, and we decided that um, we weren't going to have the fort there at the rubbish bins because I mean who wants to have a fort in a rubbish bin let's be honest um, <laughs> And uh, <laughs> uh, and so we basically spent about, I don't know, about an hour wandering around the school. We were supposed to be playing cricket, but um, we just bunked. We were so excited about this new thing that, you know, that we started, the Silkworm Gang and everything, that we couldn't even, we couldn't care less about school at that stage. And we wandered around um, the school trying to find a new fort for ourselves. And man, did we find an amazing freaking fort. Basically, we found... A mulberry tree, which is what silkworms eat, right? Just eat some food. Um, and behind the mulberry tree was a whole bunch of huge pieces of firewood that the school teachers were using for their fires in their houses. And basically, we didn't even care that that was firewood. What suddenly, what we saw was we could build a wall around the mulberry tree using the blocks of wood that we found just behind the mulberry tree. And that's exactly what we did the next day. Uh, or for the next three or four weeks, every single day during school lunch, we would go to the mulberry tree or, as it became known, the Silkworm Gang Fort, and we would build that, um, <laughs> we would build that wall out of, the, out of the pieces of wood. And um, eventually, I got started getting greedy, and um, eventually I started charging for membership. And uh, what I started, I started charging lunch, actually. <laughs> you had to give me, like, uh, a sandwich, well, all the original members did, never had to give me anything, but um, all the new members had to give me like a sandwich or if, if, they, if they had a chocolate in their lunchbox, they'd have to give me a chocolate or they'd have to give me marbles if they had some marbles or some um, football cards or whatever. Uh, whatever I felt like really. And I don't know, um, people started getting angry. <laughs> oh, by the way, I tried to go this way, but it was wrong. So um, we actually just carry on going straight. Um, anyway, um, a few, I don't know, it was probably a few months later, it could have, 
it could have been a few weeks who knows how long it was you know when you're a kid um, time is irrelevant really you, you have no sense of um, of time per se um, but what happened was a few more gangs started to pop up um, I don't remember his surname but his name was Gareth I remember and he kind of became my arch nemesis because he started his own gang um, called the space gang and man they had the best currency ever because Gareth Gareth's dad had bought a laser printer and back then a laser printer was like serious technology I, I, and I mean serious it was like no one in South Africa had even heard of a laser printer it was just and when I say laser printer I mean those printers that um, just printed in dots um, I didn't even I don't think it was a laser printer actually I think it was a dot printer it used to go dit, 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 and it used to make dots but anyway he printed um, the most amazing currency called space bucks and it's actually a currency that I stole from him um, an idea that I stole from him many many times after uh, many years after that but um the currency was just so cool whereas the, the silkworm gang currency was just terrible it was like we drawn on basically drawn <coughs> using a, a cokey pen we drawn most of the the art on the freaking uh cut on the notes my brother and i had done it so it just it was just terrible you know it was like the worst currency ever um and so people started to drop out of the silkworm gang to go to the space gang and i was i was gutted man i couldn't understand why people would do that i was like what the silkworm gang is the original gang in the school man how can people honestly give up the silkworm gang for that butthole gary and his freaking space gang man i was angry um but but anyway eventually it, there came a time where um th the space gang created a fort and and they created a fort that was underneath um a building and basically it was behind a building and it was where a whole bunch of stuff was stored like like rocks and um, pieces of wood and and all the stuff from the school that wasn't needed anymore old bicycles and all that sort of stuff and underneath the building was a really giant basement basically and they'd created their fort in that basement but it was dusty it was dirty it was just horrible you know it was nothing compared to um, the silkworm gang fort um, but anyway one day at lunch Gar gareth i think it was gareth yeah Man, we've just run out of wood, but I'll show you where the NPC village is, guys. Um, oh, man, this place is infected. Um, <clears throat> anyway, one day, Gareth threw a ball of paper at me in class, and um, it was a note. And so there is the NPC village, guys, you can see. So uh, now you know where it is. Um, <clears throat> we we j don't have a lot of, uh, more wood to lay down, which is awesome. Um, anyway, in, and in the note, it said, um, let me just get some coffee. Mm. In the note, it said, um, the space gang declares war on you. And I was just like, oh my god, what the hell? This is, w this is ridiculous, you know, this is just getting out of hand. And, and um, I started sending notes around to the Silkworm gang members. By then, I'd lost most of them because I was a butthole. <laughs> uh, <coughs> um, oh my lord. Ow! Don't die like a noob! Oh, these spiders are too fast. Come, you bastard. Come at me. Come at me, you bastards. Run. Um, anyway, so so by then, most of my membership, I'd lost most of my membership because I was a terrible, terrible boss. Um, I didn't realize that rewarding members is better than, than taxing them. Um, <laughs> um, so anyway, yeah, we had war declared against us by the freaking space gang. And basically... Uh, it sounds like it must have been a lot of fun, but basically all that happened was um, they ran to the Silkworm Fort w faster than we did, and basically they took over the Silkworm Gang Fort, and we were renegated to the freaking disgusting um, fort of the Space Gang underneath the, in the basement of a building, man. It was just, it was demoralizing. Anyway, <laughs> that's the prelude to what I wanted to talk about. Um, that was the beginning of what I consider the great um, gang wars of my of my youth because um, we were sitting in that dusty basement and thinking about what we'd lost. We'd lost this epic fort and it was in a, a mulberry tree that had mulberry berries which are really delicious berries and it, it had unlimited supply of um, food for our silkworms during silkworm season and we just couldn't believe it. Um, and we decided that we were going to get the silkworm gang fort back 
whatever it took, we were going to fight for it. And we were going to get it back because Gareth was just the biggest butthole ever. Rich kid with a freaking laser dot printer. I mean, you know, you can't let a, a rich kid like that take your freaking, mo freaking mole hole or, or fort. <laughs> Gareth, if you're listening, you're a butthole, man. And if you ever come to my mole hole, I'm going to kick your ass. Um, but anyway, guys, we've come to the end of this episode. Man, was it, that was the longest story I've ever told. 15 minutes story. <laughs> but we're going to finish the story in the next episode while we're digging this railway line. Um, all we need is a little bit more wood now um, to finish off the wood to the NPC village. And then we can start laying down the tracks. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. Um, basically, just been an episode of me talking. But uh, if you've enjoyed it anyway, please hit the like button. And... Um, leave me a comment guys if you have any stories from school or from your youth if you were in a gang also i'd love to know um tell me your stories in the comments below guys i love hearing them and love reading them and of course if you haven't subscribed yet please subscribe because if you don't i'm gonna smack your ass with this this spade and you don't want that happening guys this has been rendog playing minecraft survival 1.3 um well minecraft 1.3 survival we'll see you in the next episode goodbye